Hi, I'm Megan. I'm Anna. And welcome to When Creativity Knocks. Today we are at the Southern Women's Show in Charlotte, North Carolina. We are very excited to be here. My home state. And, <laughs> and of course we have Cindy. You know Cindy's <laughs> always with us. We bring her everywhere. And um, we actually have a live audience today. Hi, Woo! audience. So we are very excited. We're going to be doing a really great project that Cindy has brought along today. We're going to be using Rit dye, and we are doing her lovely Colors of Autumn Fall Tassel Necklace. So stay tuned. We're going to get started right after this. Miss Bisson, Cindy, one of our favorite artists, can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to do today? We are going to repurpose a bed sheet. We are going to take some white buttons and make them a rainbow of colors. <laughs> I'm really confused. <laughs> Don't give me the glazed look. <laughs> the hard part's done. You're just going to have the fun putting it together. But I'm going to show you how to take a bed sheet with mix, mixing some colors of writ dye and create something totally unique to wear with all of your fall clothes. Now this tassel necklace was created to match the Pantone Fall 2011 color palette. Rit oh. Dye has come up with the recipes, which are included in your kit, to match these colors perfectly. You will be seeing the colors that are in your past tassel necklace everywhere in the fall fashions. And this gives you a piece that you can wear with almost anything. Now in our audience, have we heard of Rit Dye before? Yeah, I'm sure some of us have done some tie-dye work in our day as well. Um, Rit Dye offers that, and they have been around for quite a while, over 85 years. Wow. They've been around, and Cindy's project today is really great. I know she mentioned we'll be using lots of different colors, but um, they have over 25 colors, and they don't only do liquid dyes. They also have some powdered dyes. Mm -hmm. So um, as my mom mentioned, you guys have sort of that recipe, so just know that there are unlimited possibilities with your coloring yes. schemes. They so really ladies. are. I mean, you can mix these dyes and make match anything. It's amazing. It's amazing. So we're going to we're going to start off Cindy first with showing how to actually dye wood. Mhm. Mm it also can be used on fabric, paper, wood, it just it's so versatile. I was just going to ask that because mm -hmm. I thought you could do paper. Yeah. So we're going to start by using these little leaf pendants which are from DIY bangles and they are made of wood. Lovely. We went ahead and drilled them all out first so that we could make them into an actual pendant easily. I've gone ahead and I've mixed two of the custom colors. This is cedar and ember glow which are two of the recipes that you have and I have pre-mixed those. I'm going to be showing you how to mix some dyes when we do the next step but these are pre-mixed. Fabulous names might I add? Aren't they beautiful? The ember names glow. are Hello. Orchid Hush. I, mean, I would totally wear names. Orchid Hush. <laughs> I would. They're beautiful names. It's a fun name. And we're just going to take the foam brush that we're going to give you and literally paint the wood with it. It's almost like a watercolor. So you're basically so you're basically dyeing the um, st or staining the wood. Yes. Like you would if you were using stain. Paint stain. Yeah, a regular paint type stain. Only you can custom color it to match anything. The less water you use when you're mixing, the more vibrant that the color concentration could be. So you can make it much darker or make it much lighter. I wanted it to be kind of a watercolor soft effect. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and you're going to finish up doing that. And mm -hmm. then when we come back, we're going to do the next step. Mm -hmm. So once you finish staining your piece, you can set it aside to dry or just give it a little blot with a paper towel. Again, we want that watercolor effect, so it's okay to let the colors flow together. And then we're going to stamp an over image. Any stamp can be used for this, whether it be a background stamp or a word stamp, anything that you like. Judykins has given us these great stamps to use on these projects today. And I'm going to show you how to stamp using a larger stamp than your piece that you're working with. Just ink it. This is part of our crafters workout series. That's right. <laughs> and rather than trying to take the large stamp and figure out where on the piece you're getting it, you can just pick up your piece place it right on top oh. and press. And that way you can choose which part of the image you'd like to have. Ooh. And you end up oh. with the image transferred. Now, I like the way it kind of runs a little bit into the wet wood. If the wood was completely dry, it would be a little bit crisper, but I kind of, but again, it's like a watercolor image. Is there a particular kind of ink 
you can do or just it's a whatever black, kind? Just a black ink. I've done it okay. with multiple different kinds of ink pads and it works. Dye -based. Yeah, dye -based, dye based is best. You can use best. a pigment, but a dye based works best. Okay. That's the next step. So now you're going to show us how to dye some buttons, Cindy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's super easy to do and we're actually going to use one of the formulas that's included in the little sheet that you have and we're going to make deep teal because I'm a teal junkie as Anna knows. I love the color teal. And now these recipes, I know there's a few of them in the kits that we've given here to our audience, but if you go on to Rit Dye's website, uh, which is RitDye.com, there's actually like over 500 on there. So I mean, there's lots and lots of options for you. Yes, it's endless. It's, and you can mix your own colors too. Even if now, you're, using, you're using hot water? Yes. Now I'm, is it boiling hot, microwave hot? I've done it both ways. Okay. I've done in a pan on the stove, I've done it in a microwave, as long as it's good in hot water because the heat activates the colors. A little more intense. And we're using um, some uh, big bag of white buttons from Blue Lansing. Lansing. And I'm just amazed. They are, aren't they amazing? And then you can see how vibrant the hues are. So They're let me great. show you how to mix one of these custom mm -hmm. colors and I'll show you how easy it is to dye buttons to match anything. So we're going to start with a tablespoon of the royal blue. And this is to the cup of hot water. This is our Crafting Chef series. Yes, the chemistry, <laughs> the chemistry test is later. Okay, and then to that we're adding one and a half teaspoons of dark green. I am wearing craft gloves because it is dye and it will dye your fingernails. I have learned that. I love that she calls the surgical gloves craft gloves. Well, it's called on the road, you use what you it's can. A crafting <laughs> it's a crafting surgical line. Now you do half a teaspoon? This is one and a half teaspoons of dark green. Oh, okay. Oh, I should be reading your recipe. And then stir. Ooh. Can I drop the buttons in? Yes, you can. And then you simply drop your buttons in. And what I do when, when I did when I dyed the buttons for the class was actually then popped it back into my microwave and I microwaved the buttons in the bowl of the dye for about a minute and a half to two minutes just to kind of give it a little jump start and get it kicked in a little so bit then sooner. So how long did you leave? How long did you say leave After I microwaved them for a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, I left them for maybe 20 minutes. 20 minutes, that's all? It, it really depends on how vibrant you want your color. If you leave them less time, they're more pastel. If you let them go... Can you fish one out? Yes, I can. You end up with these really I deep... I just want to see her put her hands in the dye. And just, oh, it's already starting. Yeah, and just that starting. amount of time, you've wow. got like almost this pale shade of it. And the longer you let it set, and that's without microwaving them, you end up with these great vibrant colors. I'm thoroughly excited for this. We are about to tear some bed sheets. <laughs> I want to make a necklace. So you, I, This is just a plain white bed sheet. And now you can either do a large section at once and then tear it into strips, or you can tear your little strips ahead of time and then dye those. It depends on how many of the necklaces or projects you'd like to make. So do you use, is it 100% cotton? This one is 100% cotton. Okay. That probably would take the dye the best and be the easiest to tear. And it tears very, very easily. I literally, I wanted these strips random and I wanted mm -hmm. them to have the rough edges. So I literally just tore it. So, but you also, I see here, you have a piece that's maybe about one, two, three, about three inches wide. Mm -hmm. You just did that. So yeah, that might can, be even easier maybe to dye groups of colors. If you're colors trying to do too. more than one, you want to do it in a, in a bigger section at a time. If you're just making one for yourself and you want to try it, you can do the individual strips. Yeah. So then again, you're going to just drop this in the I'm dye like we did the I'm going to drop this in the same dye that we just mixed. I did take off my craft gloves. And immediately, even in that amount of time. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Just from dropping it in, you Did can you see, see how that? vibrant that deep teal color is taking into the thing. And once it's dyed to the color that you like, then I placed it on a couple of sheets of paper towels and I put it back in the microwave. And again, I microwaved it in a minute and a half to two minutes or so, just to kind of speed the drying process and to further set the dyes. You can set it aside. I did some where I let them air dry and it works too. And when you put it, when you put it in the microwave, you said, are you leaving it in the dye? No, I take it out of the dye, set it on a couple of sheets of paper towel, oh, okay, and okay, then sorry. place it in the microwave that. and cook away. My family's like, what are you doing now, mother, with the microwave? Well, these guys are used to me doing strange things <laughs> in the kitchen. So once you've got it dyed and dry and you've got your strips all torn, this is the ember glow again. Isn't it beautiful? You want to tear some bed sheets? <laughs> yeah. Now for this project, I used one strip from each of the 10 colors that are in the Pantone Fall 2011 collection so that it would match basically anything. 
I left them long. It's probably, I'm guessing, about three feet. Again, it depends. Well, this is this is 24 inches. So it so probably is just about, about three feet. About 30 inches, about, yeah. yeah. a little bit less than a foot, I mean, a yard, excuse me, maybe. I left some of them at different lengths because I wanted it to be a tassel-y, random kind of effect. So I just gathered them all together. And this is where the easy part comes in because these are already done for you. So all your beautiful colors are here together. So once you've got your tassels brought together and they're kind of in the same length, I cheated when I did this because I actually wrapped it around my neck. Gets you a big head. Because I have a big head. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Love you too. And <laughs> We're a very loving crafting family up here. <laughs> to decide about where I wanted to knot it. So once you've got it tasseled together, then it's time to start adding the fun buttons, which is what Megan's so excited about. Yay! Again, you have a one button in each of these colors. You may use as many or as few as the buttons as you'd like. We have a pa we have, we're using some paper clips, mm -hmm. and we're just going to shove the, um, the bed sheet right into the paper clip. I think you're using, I probably need a corner. Well, I kind of rolled it in my fingers to make the end a little bit pointy. Then I stuffed it to the hole and I used that paper clip to push it through the buttonhole. So once you've got your buttons on as you want, then we're going to do the same thing with your finished leaf that you've stamped. I took one of the tassels that's dangling, kind of rolled it in my fingers, and pushed it through the hole. And again, is, you is can use your paper twirl? clip to push it through all yeah, the way. The, the tassel twirl could probably be a dance move. <laughs> Just saying. So once you've got it through, I just tied it on. And again, you can let your leaf dangle lower. You can bring it right up tight to where you knotted it. There's no wrong way. That's and very that's, simple. It's, it's that simple. You're just tying it on, and it's supposed to be random. So really, you're just going to fuss with it until you get it how you like it, mm -hmm. and it works for you, and the colors, and the buttons. And I'm just like, the buttons are beautiful. This oh, was a great project. I just want to play with them. I just want to thank you for bringing this idea um, to fun. our viewers and how to really use the rit dye. On wood, and, on plastic, and on all. fabric, and you can use it on paper. Cindy, as always, my dear, it has been a pleasure. Um, our audience, did we have a good time? Yay! You can good. do this, right? Good. Are you still we overwhelmed do or you think this is doable? This is totally doable. See? Perfect, so this if they can doable. do it, you can do when it. When I was if talking I can do about it, mixing dyes, you we were know. all like, ah! <laughs> Perfect, well, Cindy, thanks so much. If you'd like to see more projects and more recipe color ideas, you can head over to RitDye.com or you can click on the Rit Dye icon at our website, WhenCreativityKnocks.com. Uh, thanks again to our audience, to Cindy, and like we always say, when creativity knocks, open, open the, the door. door.